Hello everybody, welcome back. This is gonna be a bit different. I decided, you know what, I want to talk about music, but not creating music or making music, just one of my favorite musics, one of my favorite music soundtracks as of late. So as you may or may not know, if you're new to this channel and you haven't checked it out, one of my first videos was a review slash talk about Symphogear, a very, very dumb anime about girls fighting with the power of magical, mystical, music-based magic technology. It was really dumb. It's really, really self-indulgent. It's surprisingly mature and fraught with tension in certain parts, but it's really, really good show, and I loved it dearly, and as you might have guessed, this channel was originally going to be a anime review channel, but, well, YouTube changed its policies, and they basically stated that anything having to do with animation was obviously meant for kids and might result in your channel being taken down, even it's for a animation show where the uh, child gets literally Kali Maud in on screen in the latest season. It, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's animation. It's for kids. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about music. In this case, I want to talk about the soundtrack for the first season of Symphogear. So, it's just... This is a show made... It seems like this is a show made by musicians. Or at least someone in the production of this show is very much into music. Because a lot of this show is based around the power of music, the power to connect people, and how it can be used in certain circumstances as literal power and this is sort of showcased with the MacGuffins of the series, the titular Sympho Gears being artifacts that can only be activated with the power of song and this leads to a lot of awesome scenes where the characters are literally singing their own battle themes and just really hype moments and just ugh, I'm getting so I just I'm getting really hard to talk about things that I really like because I just ramble incessantly, but we're going to talk about the series. We're just going to talk about the songs. So, first things first, let's talk about the opening. The opening is uh, Symphogazer, a really, really, really catchy synth pop tune, and it starts off with the... First of all, one thing that I will never get over is when J-pop uses English... And it's like, I understand, like, to some people, English sound... Like, if you watch any sort of anime, or if you listen to, you know, anime music, oftentimes they'll just say English words and put it out there, and apparently it's because they think it sounds cool. Like, the same way that um, Kung Fu sounds cool to us, even though it translates literally to, I believe, like... Like, there's, like, Tai Chi, or, like... God, I just, I had this fact in my head and I forgot him. But there's, like, certain martial arts names that are, like, when translated literally, literally means special, you know, art of punching people. And that sounds way less cool than Kung Fu. So, you know, it, I understand that in uh, Japanese music it might be cool to just say things in English because you think it sounds cool. But at the same time, it's kind of like, okay, that's a bit weird. But yeah, in, in Sympho Gear they have, like, Listen to My Song is, like, the big, like, when you start off the series, the main theme, Synchro Gazer, is, listen, like, the main character singing screams, Listen to My Song, and it is equal parts hilarious and surprisingly earnest, and it's honestly one of the reasons why I continue watching this show, because that just, that sting for some reason got to me. It's like, that is so stupid, but at the same time, this show's very premise is incredibly dumb, so I'm gonna watch it anyways. And I got sucked in by the fight choreography, the animation, and the incredible soundtrack, which I really, really loved. Um, this it, this soundtrack isn't breaking any boundaries. It's not... There were some weird decisions and touches that were a bit out of left field, but for the most part, this series is general anime. It's anime being anime as anime and the music reflects that and I love it for that because one of the things as I stated earlier is that these girls use their magical MacGuffins with the power of song they literally have this chant that they chant and then it they 
sing while fighting, and this isn't like some sort of theme song that kicks in while they're fighting. You see this in the animation that they are literally singing the theme song while they fight. So you get it in, um, you know, in the first episode when we're introduced to one of the main characters, Subasa, and her partner, Kanade. They are this idol group called Zue Wing, and they are having this concert when it gets attacked by noise, and then they switch over to the their fighting forms, and we get, in this, we get two different songs. We get, what is the first song called? Um, let me just check right here. The first song is in Japanese, so I can't particularly read that, but they get their second song, Orbital Beat, and both of them are fantastic. The first one is this general poppy, you know, poppy synth, tune which is just incredible the vocal work is great like their dancing and animation is on a level much higher than the rest of the series like they obviously wanted to get people in with incredible animation and this incredible sound work and then when there is an attack on their concert they switch over to their battle theme which is a fantastic little duet between the two of them and it's just it syncs up perfectly with the music it's almost like you're watching a animated dance and it's one of the things about Sing Symfo Gear that really stands out. But this is general J-pop there. Where things start to get a bit more different is when we get to the character songs of the characters by themselves. The titular character, the main character, Hibiki, gets the artifact gun gear. She is sort of almost gifted it to it by her previous by her predecessor, Kanade, in the first episode dies she sacrifices her life to save Hibiki, and she, it basically somehow manages to almost gift her with her ability so that when noises attack again, she can fight, and she has this song. Her song is... It's odd, because it starts off with this almost bagpipe Celtic Scottish vibe, which is totally out of left field, and then it you know, goes into this pumping, fighting rhythm, and it's fantastic. I love this song, and this is actually a theme with most of the songs. When we get to Sabasa, the uh, surviving member of Zue Wing, her song, Fighting Song, comes in with this ominous Japanese, like, not really ominous, but sort of like epic Japanese chanting. It is phenomenal. It is just, there's ominous Japanese chanting, there's Japanese traditional instrumentation and there's synths going off and it is phenomenal especially when you read the translation of what she's speaking she's speaking from a place of I have lost the one person I care about in this world and now I'm just gonna fight till the bitter end and I don't need help for anyone and it's this very very the song is very very much a place of where she's it showcases that she is grieving and when she, it's very, very, it's her song showcases that she's grieving and that she still misses her friend and she's not over it. But when she eventually has enough character definition, uh, character progression to progress and get over that, her song doesn't change, but it takes this new light that lets it be seen in such a way that it's still a part of her, but she has progressed. It's this... I don't, I can't explain it adequately because I'm bad at explaining things and I'm just rambling at the camera, but I've tried to make this video like three times already and I've decided that this is the final take and we're putting this all on the internet, so yay. And then we get to Chris. Chris is a very complicated character and she, I think that showcases in the songs that she has in the soundtrack. They have her, for the most part, the battle songs and the character songs are quite similar to each other. They're quite similar in their themes and such. And I love the fact that, and, you know, it's like the battle theme is a much more upbeat, much more fast-paced song, and the character song, which talks about the character in general, is much slower and much calmed down, but it doesn't stop being fast. It doesn't stop being something you could potentially dance to. This music is very poppy, and it's very, very driving. It's very energetic. And Chris is... Chris is a bit weird because her... Whereas the other people, like I said, the Subasa's theme of Japanese sort of instrumentation intertwined with the, you know, synth stuff and Hibiki's Celtic sort of bagpipe Scottish thing she's got going on is in both songs. 
For Chris, her battle song is like straight up butt rock heavy metal, if you know what I'm talking about. It's like, this song wouldn't sound out of place on a Guilty Gear or Blaze Blue soundtrack, and if you know anything about those soundtracks, you know that's like very much riff heavy, very electric guitar, very frenetic, you know, songs for fighting games, and this is no different. This is a very frenetic, very fantastic song. This is, I can say without any shadow of a doubt, my favorite song of this album. And then we get to her character song, and it's this very, very almost mournful love song-ish. It's like, it's very much like a longing love song, and this ties in very nicely with her character, with the character arc she goes through, and to be fair, this is also very energetic. This isn't like something I'd put in a morning scene, or like in a like kiss scene. Like, this is still very, you know, energized, action-packed, but going from the straight-up guitar electric metal riffs to this almost love song was very jarring but at the same time very fitting of the duality of this character who puts off a very brash outside but is very soft inside and then we come to the final song the ending credit song called meteor light and this also is also pretty good this is a sort of like almost like soup like Chris's last, you know, Chris's character song, this is a very, this is noticeably slower, noticeably gentler than the rest of the music, but it's no less energized. There's still some energy to this song, but it's not as frenetic as the others. Like, I wouldn't have a fight to this song, which I can totally see the rest of the songs put into fight scenes, with the exception of Chris's second song. Anyways, the Simpho Gear soundtrack for the first season is great. This was obviously, you know, this entire series from the ground up was made with music in mind, and that shows in their music, and I would love to tell you to go out and acquire this soundtrack. Unfortunately, you can't. Well, you can. You can get the opening song and the credit song. You can get those on Spotify, and from what I can see, it's pretty easy to download on iTunes. The problem is, if you want to get the credit songs, you need to buy them physically. And you can't buy them all together. Like, I don't know why, but there's some sort of... Jap Japan has some weird voice actor and singer laws, from what I can tell, from what I've been able to see, which prevents, like, this stuff from being distributed digitally. So the only way you're going to get the Symfo Gear soundtrack is by buying all of them. I'm holding this right, right? Yeah, there we go. Um, nope, I'm holding this uh, just by buying all of them. Now, that wouldn't be a problem if these things didn't cost anywhere from 10 to $13 each. And each of these has, in the case for the opening and credit songs, three songs or four songs. Now, I will say, giving us instrumental versions of the battle themes and the character themes is pretty cool. And it's just, it's excellent when you want to study or you want to read. But still, the fact of the matter is that you're going to be paying anywhere from, after shipping and taxes, $13 to $15 for each of these CDs. All of these together cost me $100. And that's because I paid to get the expedited shipping. But this cost me over $100 for an anime soundtrack. That you shouldn't have to do that. I mean, I still did it because I'm a crazy person and I love this show, but if you have no interest in Simpho Gear, don't go out and buy it. And if you do have any interest in Simpho Gear, I mean, I was able to get these off of Amazon, but f a lot of these were like, this is the last one, and you only have one left, so these might not even be listed on Amazon anymore. As far as I can tell, the only place that seems to have these regularly is a website called CD Japan, which from my research at least, seems to be a pretty reputable site. But still, the fact of the matter is, is that to get these, this music, you have to buy the physical CDs, and that's running you over $100 on a single soundtrack. And I did that because I love this show. Because this show, it hit me, I got this show in a very, very bad place in my life, and it's just stupid, uplifting message hit me in a way that it really affected me, and I saw it as worth it to spend $100 on season one of the show and 
potentially more, but on the next soundtracks for the next season. But the fact of the matter is, is that I can't really... I would love to recommend this soundtrack, this set of music, but I can't because of the prohibitive cost of getting it. I, if find these songs in another way, you could probably search them up on YouTube and find them like that. If you want to get them on Spotify or such, you're kind of out of luck. And if you want to, if you check out the series and you love it as much as I did, then I totally, totally, if you can, if you can ask yourself, am I willing to drop a hundred dollars on this, on a bunch of, on a bunch of songs from one season? If the answer is yes, you do you, but if you just particularly like one character and want to get their music, then you can totally do that too, but... Uh, Gear, Season 1, has some great music. It's not earth-shattering, but it's really... It's Japanese pop music, and if you like that kind of music, you'll love the Gear stuff. They have some really cool twists, depending on the characters, and this is... It's not a must-buy for a fan of the series, but if... You're going to know if you want this. And if this rambling mess of a video that I am probably should re record, but I, like I said, I've tried to record it multiple times and I'm just going to upload this, can do anything and interest you into getting into this series, then I'll be happy with that too. Anyways, if you like this video, like it. And if you disliked it, well, fair enough. I mean, this is a rambling mess of a video. I don't know why I'm going to release this, but I'm still going to release it. But yeah do all that, and um, like my video, subscribe if you want to see more of this. I also make noises that are allegedly music. Uh, you can probably check out some videos for that. And I also have a, you know, playlist of my previous music that I did on a secondary channel, but like I said, I was originally going to use this channel for something else, and since this is tied into my website, which you can find out at juanmoreweb.site, then... You know, I decided, you know what, let's use this as my main website, because I tried to do multiple YouTube channels, and I was very bad at it, and I'm just going to switch to one YouTube channel and upload everything I do on it. So, yeah. I shall see you all later. This rambling mess of a thing is over. Goodbye.